Hi guys, for the past, uh, oh I don't know, about 10 days or so we've been cutting firewood and uh, I tried to get a little bit of footage uh, because everybody likes to watch somebody cut firewood, you know, it's just one of those things. So um, let's just go ahead and do it. And what we've got here is a uh, ash tree. It's been dead a couple of years and it's something over 100 feet tall. It's on the side of a bank with a, a barbed wire fence. And he's having to be careful that he's got some kind of an escape route should things go bad there. We want it to go to the right or it would be north for us. And the wind is pushing it back and forth about, gosh, I don't know, maybe uh, three or four feet at the top, north to south. So it was a little bit hairy, um, especially for him. <laughs> I'm standing back here with the camera. I'm trying to get as many good shots of that tree as I can, because it's, uh, it's a really a tall tree. So he's got it notched to fall to the right. And there it goes. There it goes almost. It's leaning into a little walnut tree there, it looks like. So it could have been a lot worse. And now I think we're ready to pull it off the stump. And here it comes. And here we go. The old Massey Ferguson is up to the task. And by the way, the, the driver is my son-in-law. His name is Pat Havey. It's his farm. Him and my daughter, they do a little bit of everything. They raise German Shepherd dogs. So it looks like he's going to weasel his way out of there with that log, at least for a ways. Man, that thing just keeps coming. That piece broke off of the back and made it better. And now it's uh, up the hill. Now you see we've got a short log. <laughs> uh, the funny thing was the tree was too big and too heavy and we could not drag it up the hill so we just cut it in half. And uh, he's bringing it over to the, the area where we do the cutting and splitting. So now we're back and we're going to get the rest of it. Many years ago, I had a farm similar to what he's got and I think we just got too lazy to take care of things and decided that we, oh, we uh, thought we were getting old and we, we just needed to get away and uh, take it easy for a while. Well, 
So I guess we did our homesteading when we were younger. That could have been a good thing, I don't know. But it sure is nice to have some place to cut trees. He's got... He's got probably uh, somewhere over a hundred of these ash trees that... Uh, uh, I forget the name of the worm, but... I think, believe it was a Chinese worm that came in to this area and killed almost every ash tree there was around. Good for me, because I like to burn it. it. It just burns really good, keeps your house warm. And believe it or not, I actually enjoy cutting firewood. Uh, you get out and you get some exercise and got to be careful. So, you know, that particular tree right there, he didn't want to cut by himself. Because there was, you know, anything can happen. So here we go down the other side of the hill. And we will put these two pieces right in besides the other one. So now, it's time for the wife and I to go to work. She will try to take care of the camera, push logs out of the way, and just all, be my all-around helper. And uh, believe it or not, that was a, a big tree to cut up. We're cutting between 14 and 16 inches. Uh, my stove, that's what it likes the best. And uh, he's, he used to, to uh, use longer logs, but he's found that these, these work better for him too. So he uses nothing but uh, wood heat, as do we. And it saves a little bit of money. Gives you a little bit of exercise. Nothing like being out in the fresh air. Now if you'll notice, I'm, I'm wearing summer clothes. And this has only been about 10 days ago, and it was about 83 degrees. Crazy weather for that time of year. Around the 1st of October here in Indiana, you never know what you're going to get. Now that saw, that's uh, <laughs> kind of a crazy story behind that saw. Oh, 30 years ago probably. Uh, maybe 25, I don't know. It's been a while, put it that way. I had two or three saws, and uh, they were all stills. Man, I like those steel saws. And uh, we weren't cutting any wood though, so... I gave them all to my kids. And then when it came time to 
start burning wood again. Uh, here I am without a saw. And there was an old guy came around with this Chinese saw. And uh, he, he told me that it cost $105 new. And I, you know, I didn't think too much about that. But uh, at any rate, he thought he would sell it to me. He asked me that if I would give him $65 for it. I figured if I could use it for a week or two, it'd be worth that. And that doggone saw, I've used it uh, about three weeks straight every day. And the doggone thing just keeps right on hum humming, man. And I, it's, it's, it's very surprising. Uh, I just figure I'll get up one of these days and it'll be dead, you know. But so far, so good. I did put a, a good organ chain on it, and that made a big difference. A nice 20 inch, I don't know about nice, but a 20 inch saw for $65. How can you turn that down? I would probably buy another one. I don't like to do that, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. I try to get away with sharpening about once a day. I know some guys sharpen them every time they load up with fuel, but I, I'm not much into that. This ash is not all that hard, so it isn't that detrimental to the chain. And uh, be quite honest, about three to four hours of, of this is all I want anymore anyway. That log there is about 18 inches, I guess. And the old saw is going right through it. From here it looks like it's cut and crooked, but what that is is a, an indentation in the log itself. Makes it look crooked. And this is the way we end the day. We get to play with the dogs. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you can. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.